Hello, and welcome to a new edition of Hey Chill Explains with your host, Dr. Mario Tobias Rodrigo. And today, we're going to discuss how the use of small reactors can help in scale up processes. So, today, we're going to be discussing the top five bench scale strategies for scaling up. The chemical process pipeline is a long and winding process that involves a number of phases, starting with the discovery of a new chemical or a new reaction and the characterization of it, passing through the optimization of this, of this process in terms of temperature, pH, pressure, agitation, into the scale-up processes. The objective of this scale-up phase is that we increase the production of our product of interest. However, we cannot overlook certain things, such as, for example, the process safety, that can have tremendous consequences down the pipeline. So, without further ado, let's jump into the top five things where small reactors really shine in the scale-up phase. The first step in the scale-up process, as small reactors are going to have a huge impact, is the characterization of the thermodynamics and the kinetics of the reaction. These are going to be the values that are going to be controlling our chemical reaction of interest. However, in the scale-up process, these values are going to change, especially as we think of larger and larger reactors, the agitation conditions are going to be, in some cases, less than ideal. This is going to result in gradients in chemical concentration and temperature that are going to have massive impacts in the productivity of our reaction. For example, if we have pockets of high concentration of some of our reagents, this can result in the precipitation of this reagent. Temperature gradients are also going to have a massive impact in our reaction. It can be the case that some of these pockets, the temperature is going to be very low, resulting in a very slow progress of the reaction. Or, on the other hand, it can be that the temperature is very high, and this can result in processes such as the composition reactions and thermal runaways that not only are going to affect the productivity of the chemical reaction, but can also be a hazard. Also, small reactors can be of immense help addressing reproducibility issues. It can be the case that uh, we are using reagents that are different from normal batches, and they are going to result in values that are not going to be realistic. Small reactors are going to be great in this field for two reasons. The first one, we're using small volumes, which means we don't need to add as much reagent as we would need to add at larger volumes. This is going to result in a most cost-effective approach. The second one is that we're using small footprint reactors. This means that we can operate several of them in a reduced space. This is going to reduce the variability that we would have, for example, if we had to use different batches or if we had to test them in different times with all the potential variation that can happen between tests. The first steps of the process development pipeline are characterized by the use of high purity uh, reagents. However, as we move to as larger volumes, high purity becomes very expensive and therefore is not economically viable. In that case, we need to move towards the use of raw materials that are not going to be as pure. The first consequence that uh, using lower purity materials can have is the reduction of the efficiency in a process. But also it can have other complications, such as, for example, side reactions that we didn't account for when we were operating at lower volumes, but also it can affect storage because side reactions can result in processes such as the composition and thermal runaways. But Small reactors can be very useful in this aspect because we can actually test for this lower purity and it's going to inform us if our reaction is still going to be viable at higher volumes. But also, we can test for side reactions. And one of the main issues that these side reactions have is that the amount of energy and the amount of product is going to be proportional to the amount of mass that we have. So if we test 
at small volumes, we can actually have it under control conditions that are not going to be incredibly dangerous. So that's going to inform us of what kind of mitigation strategies we need to put into place. This brings us to the fourth aspect in which these small reactors can really be helpful and is to understand the safety considerations that our reaction has. One of the main challenges that reactions can have at industrial scale is the presence of exothermic reactions. We have talked very much in depth about these kind of reactions, but summing up, they are reactions in which the energy is going to be released. And this can result in thermal runaways. If we have a feedback loop in which the energy that is being released results in an increase in the temperature in the reactor, that is going to further increase the rate at which the reaction happens. Small vessels allow for small quantities of reagent, as we mentioned previously. So we can test these things. And also, small volumes are much more efficient in the heat exchange with the surroundings. However, this is a double-edged sword, because if we have that the reactor is cooling down very quickly because of this very efficient heat exchange, we are not reproducing what would happen at larger volume. And this is where five-factor testing is very important. And we have another video that describes perfectly what is the effect of the five-factor. Finally, we're going to have pilot testing in which we're going to use a volume that is going to be representative of what is going to happen at a larger scale. However, when we have larger reactors, we are going to have more limited control over what is happening inside. So then the ideal path that we want to follow for this pilot testing is using small vessels, moving to medium vessels, and finally to larger vessels. However, in all these first steps from small and from medium, we can carefully tune what the conditions are that are going to increase the efficiency of our process, but also is going to keep everything under safe conditions. Normally, in this last part of the video, I just give the three take-home messages for you to think when you finish watching this video. However, there are not only three messages I can just give you, because we've, we've covered quite a lot of different strategies in which small reactors can help. And I think that there's only one take-home message from this video, and that is that small reactors are great, and they are super powerful tools, so don't doubt and use them in order to increase the efficiency in which you scale up your processes. So that's it from me. I am Dr. Mario Torres Rodrigo, and this is HG Explains. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please come back to us. Thank you very much.